go. Good. So now it's time for the most uh, wished question <laughs> uh, from Maris the Law. So I have a situation for you. Um, suppose you were a bad guy, got in trouble, and had a life imprisonment as a sentence, and you can have nothing with you but three albums that you can listen for the rest of your life because one of the guards of guardians of the prison is a nice guy and gave you them as a gift. So which albums would you choose and why? Wow. Okay. Um, well, first of all, it goes without saying anathema serenades. I don't have to think about that. You know, this this was the first album that I've ever listened to in this um in the in this particular style of doom. Um and it completely blew my mind. Um when 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 I listened to it, it, it was it, it was like nothing I've ever listened to before. Mm -hmm. Um it, it it was it was something that inspired me to want to write this particular type of music even before I was a musician or even before I actually thought about doing music. Um, so yeah, it it had a huge impact on me, and that's it. I don't know if Darren hears me right now. Uh, <laughs> Darren White, the vocalist on on uh, on that particular album, but that was literally the only anathema album that i can personally listen to uh, that's it okay it, it, it's something yeah it's something completely strange and and very weird you know because a lot of people say oh no 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 i'm more into their let's say middle stuff you know like um, mm -hmm. um alternative four or eternity or you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, you know stuff like that for, for me it wasn't like that for me serenades it was 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 the milestone of of um of what I wanted to do furthermore. The second album that I will always listen to without getting bored would be One With Darkness by Tristitia. Um very, very underrated bands, you know, and and uh -huh. um yeah, for, for me, for me, it was. I have to be honest. When I first first listened to Tristitia, uh -huh. uh, and especially this particular album, I was home alone. My parents were working um, some somewhat of a night shift. They finished they finished work at about midnight, um, and I was listening to this album about ten ten thirty p.m. at night. And I actually had to go outside because I got scared. <laughs> I had to go outside of the house and meet some friends and and stuff like that because I, it it completely freaked me out, you know, <laughs> the entire the entire priest voice um, combined with with a very very dark you know church organ atmosphere and all that stuff, man, it completely completely freaked me out. And yes, I got so scared I actually had to leave the house because I was too afraid to be by myself. Well. <laughs> It's something that I've never admitted to absolutely anyone, <laughs> absolutely anyone. But this, this is going to be, for yeah, us. exactly. <laughs> this is going to be a premiere for Lucy. Um, and I would say, I would say the third album that I would, I would again listen to without getting bored would be Human by Death. Um, I've, I, I actually have a very, very strong death metal background. You know, I've mm -hmm. played in, in, um, um, in a very, very, very talented band called Unfathomable Ruination. Um, not sure if you if you heard of them, but if you haven't, mm. please check them out. They're literally just just amazing. You know, it's it's the kind of you know um, technical death metal in the style of death, um, mm -hmm. but taken to the extremes. You know, with with riffs, um, mm -hmm. a la ulcerate. You know, in that sort of very creepy atmosphere and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm a huge Cannibal Corpse fan, and I'm terribly sorry if I'm disappointing some of my friends right now by not having a Cannibal Corpse album in um, in in my uh, in my top three. Um, but it, it's it's a close match. It's a close it's a close match with with the bleeding. So I would say in between Human by Death and the Bleeding by Cannibal Corpse, I, I would have to I would have to say. 
human by death, but very, very close call to the bleeding by cannibal corpse. So yes, this these would be these would be the the, the, four. the three albums. Yeah, the, the, four the fourth. Album. If, if I'm allowed, yeah, if I'm allowed, <laughs> if I'm allowed, yeah, maybe. But yeah, these try. would be the main. Yeah, maybe <laughs> these would be the three the three albums I would definitely listen to without getting bored. Okay. Not a single second. Great. All right. And to finish our interview, would you like to leave a message to your fans who are watching us? Of course I do. Um, our fans and friends are, are extremely important to us because, yes, I will make a parenthesis right, right now. And I will say that, you know, I have been talking to a lot of musicians over the years, you know, and a lot of musicians, when, when I ask them the question, who do you make music for? Mm -hmm. They got very contrared and, and they got very confused by the question. And first thing they said, oh, I'm making music for myself. And if people like it, then, you know, that's fine. I, on the other hand, owe it all to the people. Because without the people, you would be a bedroom project or you would be a band writing music just for the sake of being in a band and not going live and not presenting mm -hmm. music. But this is where where I think, you know, the um, I wouldn't call it hypocrisy because a lot of musicians say, no, I'm making music for myself. This is the way that I express myself through music. And while this is 100% true, it's also very untrue. You're making music for yourself, then why are you publishing it? Yeah. And it's quite simple. For, for me, for me personally, and for Clouds, our fans and friends are, are very, very important. And of course, I would like to leave a message and I would like to thank them again for all their support and all their help during the years. At least our fans are, are, are fantastic. Um, whether it be at live shows or whether it be online or during the pandemic, you know, our fans supported us a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure if if by if by this time we wouldn't have been helped by our fans and friends, we wouldn't exist anymore. And this is why I owe it all to the people. I, I really owe it all to the people and I'm extremely grateful and thankful for each and every individual who are sending us nice words or they're telling us how much um, they like our music or what our music means to them and how much it's helping them to overcome various points in their lives, very bad points in their lives. I can only owe it all to them. And I am extremely grateful and thankful for all their help and support. Nice. Really nice. So... Thank you so much for this great talk, this great interview, really. And thank you as well. Thank you so much, guys, for watching us. And stay heavy.